Okay, today we're going to set up uh, OpenVPN for PFSense and we're going to see if we can also install the client side on both an Android phone and my Ubuntu Linux client. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our PFSense. I'm already logged in here. We're going to go to VPN and then open VPN. As you see by default, there's no servers configured. So we're going to go the easy route. We're going to go into Wizards. Now for the authentication type, you can set up local local database. You can use LDAP or Radius. For simplicity's sake, we're going to use local database. And we'll click Next. Okay. Here we can put in our descriptive names, queue length, lifetime. Most of these options are, are, are defaulted. Uh, you'll probably have to fill in some of these ones. And uh, click on Add New CA. This creates the certificate authority. Okay. After the certificate, now you see that we're going to create a new server certificate. This is separate from the certificate authority. This one is for the actual VPN service. Again, we have a descriptive name, key length, country code, a lot of the same information. And we're going to create a new certificate. Okay. After that, we're going to specify which interface to list on. This is the actual service that, that we're creating now. I'm going to specify this, the actual interface to listen on to, the protocol, the local port. You can change these if you want to. A description. Uh, I'm going to leave this one blank. And most of these options I'm just going to leave default. Now the tunnel network. This is going to be a virtual network that is assigned. Out of this network we're going to assign IP addresses to the clients. So when somebody connects, they're going to get an IP address from the 192.168.2.0 range, which works for me since my LAN is 192.168.1.0/24, as listed here. Now, if we wanted to, we could make this a redirect gateway, which basically means instead of having a split tunnel allowing this network to only this network, we could do a redirect gateway, and that's going to force all the traffic through this tunnel. Okay. We can specify the maximum number of concurrent connections, compression, whether or not clients can connect to each other that are both connected to the network, all kinds of stuff here. Um, DNS server, I'm going to use PFSense for the DNS server, and the NCP server, my default domain name. Okay. don't really care that much about NetBIOS over TCP IP or even WINS, so I'm just going to leave most of the stuff where it's at, I'm going to click on Next. Okay. Now these two rules, this allows traffic from clients to connect to the, v the server itself, to the PFSet server. This option allows people to connect from outside to make their actual VPN tunnel. Okay. So this one you might want to turn off so that someone connecting to your uh, tunnel doesn't have access to your PFSense server, but in my case, I'm pretty much the only one I'm going to connect, so I'm going to leave them both checked. I'm going to click on Next, and ta-da, it's finished. Okay, we we'll click on Finish. There's our server configuration here, and as far as the firewall, we'll go look at what that did over here. We got our, our rule down here. You can see it was created by the OpenVPN wizard. It's opening up port 1194. Uh, from you know from the WAN address, people connecting to the WAN address, um, and now for, we have a new tab up here called the Open VPN tab. This allows people connecting into the Open VPN interface to go anywhere, because we might want to use this as a kind of a proxy so you could tunnel through home or maybe just connect to your internal resources, whatever. Now, now that we've got the server configured, we have to configure users. So I'm going to go to System User Manager. We're going to click over here to add user, and we're just going to create a simple user. We're going to create Kurt, super secret password, full name. Okay. Uh, I don't want the user account to expire, but I'm going to make myself a member of the admins group. I want to create a certificate. 
And for descriptive name, I'm just going to put my name. If you have more than one certificate authority installed, you can make a selection. And this should be good for about 10 years. And I'm going to click on Save. Okay. Now we can edit it and make sure that it created everything properly. My user certificate's there. I can export the private key, or I can export the certificate. Um, but they're really just fine with the right here. Once I've got that set up, I can also check the, uh, the certificate manager. Now here's the CA certificate that we just created, the certificate authority. It's of course self-signed. Um, we've got certificates. We have our server certificate created here. Now this certificate up here, you can just ignore this. This is basically to allow web connections to manage the PF Sense box itself. This was created for us already. It's a self-signed cert. We really don't need to worry about that unless, unless we want to create one signed by a certificate authority, trust the certificate authority in our browser and all that stuff. Here's the user certificate that I created for myself. Now, over here we have a couple options. We can export the certificate, which which is just going to be the certificate. We can export the private key, or we can export the certificate plus the key in a P12 file or a PKCS12 file. And on this tab, we have certificate revocation. We can we can revoke certificates if we want to. At this point, we're pretty much set up. We just have to configure a client on the Linux box and on the cell phone. So let's go to services. I'm sorry, VPN. Open VPN. Client export. Now this isn't normally there. To get this here, we go to system, packages, and you can see that I've installed the Open VPN client export utility. If this isn't here, you'd have to go to available packages and scroll down or just do a search for Open VPN. It's not listed here because I've got it installed already, but you normally find it in this list and click the plus next to it to install it, and that would install into installed packages. Okay, now that it's installed, when we go to the Open VPN tab, we have the client export tab available. Now from here, I've got some options for the host name resolution. I can specify the interface IP address that it's listening on currently, but that's likely to change in my case. I'm, I'm using a uh, home ISP. If you have a static ISP, this is probably just going to be fine. In my case, I'll probably want to maybe do other and put in my host name. Something that resolves to my external IP address. Maybe I can do PF sense. I think that resolves as well. Okay. Now we can specify whether or not to, to verify the, the common name. Um, most of these options are going to be default. We're going to leave them where they're at. One option I'm going to check is I'm going to check to use a password to protect the PKCS12 file contents um, so that my private key is protected. I'm going to put in a password. This protects us so that once our file is exported, if we store it on a Dropbox or a, or a SkyDrive or G Drive or anything like that, it's it's not uh, available to anybody that has access to one of our computers that has this. So let's see here. Here's a list of users, and we can export for the OpenVPN Connect option. We might use that for our cell phone. We could use the general Android if we wanted to. Um, the config only, I think this is used for Linux. I'm just going to use the archive. I'm going to, this is going to give me a nice zip file. And I'm going to save that file to my downloads folder. Okay, that's done downloading. It really didn't take that long. I was pausing the video to see if I could uh, change the video to record a terminal window or a command prompt or anything else. Uh, but it looks like I'm going to have to stop the video at this point and select the entire desktop. So that will be on a separate video.